You didn't get that on tape, did you? Yeah, I <laughs> Good morning. It is great to be here this morning, great to be worshiping with you. And I want to tell you, if you missed game night last night, you missed a good time. We had a wonderful time. There were about 30 of us at my count, and um, several families were represented, and we, we had some fun playing different games, and then had some food, which was delicious. And um, so I, wanna, I, I do want to thank Linda, because she was the one that said, we need to do a game night. And I have to tell you, I was a tad skeptical, but it worked out great. Thank you, Linda, for pursuing that. I know, are you gonna say I told you so or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be in big trouble. And there is a meeting immediately after church this morning. Um, and I hope some of you can, can attend that. But I just wanna, um, just wanna say thanks for being here. And it's wonderful again to be worshiping with you. God is present among us. Christ is our light and our hope. Would you stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship? As God called Moses from the mountain, we are called to be God's people. As Jesus called the disciples to climb with him to the peak of another mountain, we are called to follow wherever he leads. As the disciples stood in awe at the sound of God's voice, we are called to worship in wonder and praise. Would you join me in hymn number 73, O Worship the King, we will sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5.
you please be seated? And if my friends would like to come up to the front, while they're coming up, I just want you please to take a note of the insert that should be in your bulletin. Um, and it talks about the things that are coming up for Lent. Um, Ash Wednesday snuck up on both Ed and I, but it is this Wednesday. The Ash Wednesday service will be at 7 o'clock at the Dallas United Methodist Church. It's a community service. There are, there's a list of the soup and scriptures. It will not be on Mondays. It will be on Wednesdays, and that list is in the bulletin. And then we will have a Holy Thursday service here and a Good Friday service at Shavertown. Again, a again a joint service so just so you know i hope if you didn't get one of these please let me know and i will make sure that you do have it and obviously i did not have a note written to myself about that so that's why i forgot but now let's talk to the children good morning how are you oh, look at these faces you're in church you should be happy Aren't you happy to be here with your church family? Wow. Wow. We're happy that you're here. Okay. All right, I guess I have to go in another direction. Does anybody know what this is that I have in my hand? Yes, Faith. A Bible? It's a Bible. And did you ever think about the fact that the Bible is like a little library that we can carry around. Now this is the whole Bible. I know, I know, Kennedy, it seems like a stretch, but I really do have a point. <laughs> In the Bible, there are, there is the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the Old Testament talks about everything that happened before Jesus was born. So let's see, how long is the, if we look at the Old Testament, it goes on for quite a while. It's a big part of the Bible. Oh my goodness, I'm still not finding the beginning of the New Testament. Oh, I've got it. Okay, so this, this part of the Bible is all the Old Testament. So that talks about everything that happened before Jesus was born. And then after Jesus was born is this part of the Bible. So that's called the New Testament. So we have the Old Testament that talks about everything that happened before Jesus was born. And the New Testament is after Jesus was born. The thing is, once we get into the Old and New Testament, we have different books. Like, for instance, the New Testament starts with the book of Matthew. And in Matthew, that's a book of the Bible. So think about it. If you were going to the library and you took a book off the shelf, we would take the book of Matthew. And then in Matthew, there were different chapters. I, I know that a couple, probably Kennedy and Faith, or you're reading chapter books by now, right? So you know what a chapter is. And so we've got 28 chapters in the book of Matthew. And so that's about the life of Christ and what he did when he was here on earth. And so we've got, got the book of Matthew and set many other books that are in the New Testament. But then within Matthew, we have chapters. And then we also, if we're looking for a specific verse, so we've got within the chapter, we have verses and those all have numbers on them. So that's how we find, like for instance, when I'm talking about Matthew 17 today, I will turn to the chapter, Matthew 17, and I'll read from there, and it will tell us a different story about Jesus' life. But I just <coughs> wanted you to know that, because I don't often stop and explain that, and I think it's important for us to know that this is like a little library that we can carry around. We can carry it around and refer to it any time we want. So don't ever, don't ever be afraid to ask an adult, or if you have your own Bible, Faith, I know you have your own Bible, mm -hmm. and um, you can, if you want to read something in it, or look for, look for God's wisdom in the Bible, it's there for you. Let's pray. 
Almighty God, I pray that you will just touch these children. Touch these children, touch these adults that are here today. Make it help us all to grow in your wisdom and your light. Keep these children safe and well. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, Lindsay, Miss Lindsay's not here today. Uh, I think Eric is going to take TJ in the back. Does anybody want to go in the back? Are you going to stay with them? Okay, I, I think we've got a couple of acres to, uh, to color this morning. Are you good with that? To remain seated and sing with me, turn your eyes upon Jesus. to the children, I'm going to be reading from Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9 this morning. Hear now the word of the Lord. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them to the top of a very high mountain. He was transformed in front of them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Lord, it's good that we're here. If you want, I'll make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, look, a bright cloud overshadowed them. A voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I dearly love. I am very pleased with him. Listen to him. Hearing this, the disciples fell on their faces, and they were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, don't tell anybody about this vision until the human one is raised from the dead. Thanks be to God for his holy word. I'm not sure if it could have escaped you or not, but there was a football game last week that actually got a lot of attention. Now, I have to tell you that when I was growing up, my father liked to watch the New York Giants on television, and I don't remember who played in that first Super Bowl, but I know that I watched that Super Bowl game with my dad. And then as, as time has gone on, my brother became a sports writer. So I felt as if I needed to keep up with at least one sport so I could talk to him about that. So I am a football fan, I'll admit it. I don't like to admit exactly how upset I am that there's no more football on television, but we're not going to go any further there. One of the women at, at Huntsville this morning did share with me that she's really depressed because there's no more football on TV. But think about Super Bowl Sunday. First of all, think about all the hype that goes into Super Bowl Sunday. My goodness, everybody is selling something that's um, talks about the big game, the big game. And think about the hype involved with the Super Bowl. Think about the fact that at one o'clock in the afternoon, the pregame show comes on. The game doesn't start probably to, until about 6.30. So there's an awful lot that they have to talk about on that Sunday. Then think about the ads. 
for the Super Bowl. They cost millions of dollars for a 30 second commercial. I was actually glad to see this year that there were a couple of commercials that referred to Jesus and that Jesus does get us. And that's, that was a wonderful thing to say. But I have to say the cost of the commercials for Coke or Doritos or Lay's potato chips, whatever it is. And then there were some that I didn't even understand. I have to admit, there are some that Earl will say to me, I have no idea what they were selling. So I'm thinking that maybe they missed the point. They've got 30 seconds to grab our attention, but we need to know what they're talking about. So have we blown things out of proportion just a little bit? Sometimes I think we've gone a little bit crazy when it comes to, when it comes to sports. And we Christians don't always make things into a big show. But think about, think about it. This big over the top kind of displays make us a little bit uncomfortable. You know, it's all about not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing. It's all about going into the closet to pray, not making a big spectacle of ourselves. These are the kinds of guidelines by which we live. All this hype, all this attention, all this widescreen technicolor makes us squirm. That might be why the transfiguration and the reading that I just read this morning was never real popular with most Christians. All right, maybe this is a bit of a leap, but you have to admit that that spectacular performance on a mountaintop must have been really something. Three out of four Gospels mentioned it. There are subtle differences, but they all tell the story of the transfiguration. So there's a clear implication that there's something important going on here. There's some message, some hint, some understanding that we need to glean from this light show that's recorded in these verses. Jesus, who seems relatively simple most of the time, all of a sudden pulls out all the stops and goes for the glitz. For the big show, the Super Sunday, it seems out of character for Jesus, doesn't it? It seems a bit over the top. Of course, we would never think that way because it's in the Bible. So therefore, it must be important. But instead of making it important, we ignore it. But what if we just went with it for a little while? What if we filed into the stands got our popcorn and our nachos, and watched the show. What might we see? Our first question has to be, who is this for? Are we looking over Jesus' shoulder as he reads his email? Or is this addressed to us? This question has been hotly debated over the years, and there's no clear consensus. Now, I take that back. The consensus is yes. There's an element that is clearly a message to Jesus and is a part of the march toward Jerusalem, which Jesus will be heading toward Jerusalem soon. But the rest of us have a message here too. <coughs> it's a pep talk, a halftime speech from the coach. I'm thinking Moses and Elijah were probably the, the coaches. Don't ask me to figure out any more than that. Some metaphors don't just go that far. But there's another component that is clearly a message to his followers, which means it's for us. The transfiguration quote is twofold. Part one, this is my beloved son, or my son the beloved, or my son whom I, I love, whichever translation you might pick up. It's a statement of authority. If the light show weren't enough, now we have an interpretation. Jesus participates in the divinity of God. And then part two says, listen to him. It's that second 
part that Peter messes up on. And we know he messes up again closer to the crucifixion, but there he is being a number one fan for Jesus. He's got his face painted in appropriate colors. Not exactly sure what those colors would be. And he's saying, I want a coach. Okay, maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but what he was trying to do was to make a declaration about what was going on. He was trying to stake a claim to second his confession by setting up a tent or a tabernacle to contain the glory of God. The problem was he couldn't contain the glory of God. This was God's moment. This was Jesus' moment to shine like the sun. It was a little presumptuous of Peter to want to put it in a tent. His job was to stand or kneel or fall on his face and wonder. Finally, he managed to do that. Our first responsibility is to worship. We are awestruck when we finally pay attention by the wonder and the glory and the awesomeness of God. Falling to our knees or lifting our hands and our voices in praise and singing, lifting our hearts in joy and compassion is what worship is all about. Don't you love that word compassion? Think about it. It takes passion, what we love and what we just can feel in our hearts, and it has us share it. Compassion, sharing what we love. Our worship should do more than just give us a warm feeling in our hearts. It should transform us to shine like the sun as we bring light and life to those around us. Our family, our neighbors, our co-workers should know that we've been to worship because they see in us a desire to listen to Jesus. Worship is our moment to hear again the call to serve, the call to love, the call to give ourselves away. Worship is all about Jesus. But at the same time, it's all about us about him as the beloved son and as us, the ones drawn together in community and privileged to be able to listen to him. That means, and I'm sure you saw this coming from when I started this message, for a follower of Jesus, every Sunday is a super Sunday. Let's pray. Oh my mighty God, we thank you for this, this time of worship, this time that we can just come to meet you here in our, in our sanctuary. But Lord, we know, we know that you are with us whenever and wherever we are, and we thank you. We thank you for your son. In your name we pray, amen. Would you join me now in the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 881 in the hymnal. I believe in God, Father Almighty. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, do we have any joys or concerns? Barry. Absolutely. Barry's cousin Donna, who is dealing with stage four cancer. Yes. Okay. Do we have other joys and concerns? Frank. So the 
there's a church in Edwardsville that had a fire this morning. St. Hedrick's Church had a, a fire um, started around 6 this morning. So, and, and that's in a highly populated area, so please, please keep the folks around the church and the firefighters that were dealing with it in your prayers. And then also there's the results of that train derailment in Palestine, Ohio. Please keep the, the folks of that area in your prayers. And if there aren't any others, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I have one. That uh, earthquake. Yeah. Uh, Samaritan first was there. I think we need to keep that group in our prayers. Yeah, Samaritan's Purse certainly were, were there quickly in setting up. That's in the earthquake area um, in Syria and Turkey. They, so please keep the, the responders, of which Samaritan's Purse is one, and um, certainly there are many others, that they, that they can get through to, to do the good work they need to do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come to you this morning. Oh, I'm always in the need of prayer, Lord. Sometimes I get too busy and don't, don't stop and take the time to, to pray. But Lord, I know that whenever I pray and wherever I am, that you hear me. And I am so, so thankful for that. Lord, I am very thankful for the, the game night that we had last night. I'm thankful for its success. And I'm thankful that... Um, Thank you for the effort that Linda put into it. And, and Lord, I'm just very happy that we had that time of fellowship. Thank you very much. And Lord, I, I pray for I pray for a woman named Rebecca who's having health issues. I pray for Donna who's suffering from cancer and is in hospice. Pray for President Carter who is also under hospice care this morning as we speak. Lord, I pray for Bill and Laura Howell as they needed to um, admit their wife and mother to a, a nursing home, and I know that that was a very, very difficult decision for them. Lord, I pray for St. Hedwig's Church and the area surrounding that church, that I pray that, that the area surrounding is not impacted by that, by that fire this morning, and, and Lord, I, I pray that that you keep the firefighters safe. And Lord, I pray that there's no injuries or loss of life during that fire. Lord, I pray for, for the folks in the area of the train derailment in Ohio. Lord, that could have staggering effects on many, many people. And Lord, I just pray that, that those, I, I pray that we learn from the decisions that were made there, but Lord, I just pray that that there won't be um, a long-term effect to the folks in that area and those in the surrounding areas. And Lord, we do pray for those that have been impacted by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria, and I pray for organizations that have gone in to help them, like Samaritan's Purse, and just to name one that um, got in there and set up a hospital, and, and Lord, has, has been on the ground for many days um, after that tragedy struck. And, and Lord, I, I thank you for, for groups like that, that that reach out and help. Lord, I, I pray for pray for every person on our on our prayer list this morning. No matter what is going on in their lives, we pray for little David who continues to have um, chemotherapy. We pray for Corey, who's a little girl that's being treated for pancreatic cancer. And we pray for, for Thera, who is doing very well in her, her treatment. But, but Lord, those are three young ones that have been affected by cancer. And I, I pray for them as well as all the other people on our list, that they will be able to um, get the treatment that they need and to be able to be cured from, from, from cancer. But we pray for people that are dealing with other, other illnesses, whether it's 
whether it's a heart issue or something else, we pray for each and every person on our list. And Lord, I, I pray, pray for those that are dealing with, with colds and strep throat and all of the things that go on in, at this time of the year. And, and I pray that you will, that you'll be with them. Lord, we pray for those that are lonely this morning. We pray for people that feel like they're, they're alone, but Lord, help them to realize that, that there are people around them that love them. And Lord, I, I pray that we, we never forget that. Lord, I pray for the fighting in the Ukraine as it has gone on for almost a year. And, and Lord, I, I just pray that the fighting in the Ukraine will be over sooner rather than later. And Lord, I, I pray that I pray that that you will just be with those people in the Ukraine. I pray that that Vladimir Putin and the Russian government continues does not continue to to just pummel the Ukrainian people with with gunfire and, and other things. Lord, I just pray for an end, an end to that warfare. And I pray for peace on our earth. I pray for peace on our earth, peace in our country. And as always, I pray for, <clears throat> pray for the leaders in our country that they will come to you for guidance, that our land again will be under your grace, under your leadership, Lord. We thank you for being with us in everything we do. And we just pray that You'll be with us as we pray our prayer of confession this morning. Though we want to walk with Moses and see God's holy radiance, we hide in the midst of our desires, unable to perceive the presence of God's grace. While we want the world of justice and peace, you occupy the selfishness, unable to share God's loving kindness. Though we want to follow Jesus up the mountain, we cower in fear, unable to hear the light of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God has blessed us with so many gifts, let us now share our gifts. these gifts this morning, they are just a token of the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Lord, take these gifts and use them. Use them to spread your love in the world. Use them to spread your light in the world. Lord, bless these gifts and bless us that we may be your people shining your light in the world. Amen.
Amen. Mm-hmm.